Michelle, okay. did anything come up that that was interesting in Diane's class? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, in stretching, um, she said, you know, everything, of course, she throughout the class, it was making sure that you followed through in order the sequence of how the words are said. Mm -hmm. Stretching, it hit me and she emphasized in between first and second set. <laughs> of course, making sure that your legs are locked. And then the next thing is your hip stretching. And in order to do that, your body has to come down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you can stretch your spine. Yes. So it made me think I and many other people don't bring their body down enough. She said, what happens if you don't do that? Then you stay stuck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Stay stuck. Totally. So you got to lock your legs and then your body has to come down. Yeah. Then you're stretching your hips and then you're able to stretch your spine. So you know what I like for that is what Bikram said in that 1978 CD. And it's for beginners, but I do it that you bend the knees a little bit and come down. Yeah. Then you walk the hips back. And only then when I've done that, then I lift the chest up a little bit and come more. But I love that. Mm. It's absolutely perfect. It's funny you say that. I get more. I remember the first time I heard that, Sarah, which was a few recordings that I've listened to that one. And Angie, if you haven't heard this recording, I'm sure Matt can share it with you because we, we have it here. It's excellent. But I find success with that too, Sarah. Yes. Every time I do it that way, um, and then I, it made me, I found success in what I was doing today also. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think for me, and you guys have said this to me too, I think I'm just like we do in standing bow, we think we're stretching forward and we're going up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Instead of going forward. Yes. So the idea of bringing the body down more and then being able to take my entire spine, it's funny because then I do feel it more in my lower spine. I feel yeah. it more in my lower spine that way. So that was an aha moment for me today. Yeah. Um, I had yeah. Some, I've had some success in the last week with a couple of people who, you know, do the classic Pashimoto Asana where they pull like crazy on their toes till their big toes are literally going to just pull off their Yeah. Feet. Um, and all they're doing is tightening and essentially deepening the round of their spine as they as they struggle to pull their feet off their legs. Um, and so a couple of them, I said, you know, you're not pulling the toes towards you. You're pulling you towards your toes. Very different. Yeah, action. yeah, yeah. And yeah. For a couple of people that connected and they were like, oh, yeah. And then you could see like everything shifted. Their okay. feet raced, their backs relaxed and woof. And uh, right. Forward. Yeah, right. Um, no, I can see that too. I can even feel that when you say that, Matt. Yeah. I can feel that difference even when yeah. you say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one other thing I had um, Gaddy do yesterday, which worked really well because oh, yeah. he just wasn't getting that. It's like he was, again, he was tensing his lower back and he was pulling his toes like crazy. But of course he was pulling them towards him rather than yes. him towards them. Was well, it? I, 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 right in the middle of so I said, Gaddy, Gaddy, like, stop. Let go of your feet and stretch your arms forward. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And try and touch the mirror. And then he went, whoa. Wow. <laughs> and he came right down, his body yeah. right down. And then I said, now grab your toes and keep pulling. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, he was pulling in a completely different way because, wow. because he kind of got it. So, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Sometimes people don't quite connect. It takes a yeah, while it to penetrate that one. Yeah, and I love like, that. I absolutely yeah. love that. That is a huge yeah. problem in my studio. They have started teaching flat back, and I learned from Diane: bend those elbows and stretch your hips, and then stretch your spine. And I, that's how I learned to do it. And I love your tip that you just said, Matt. I love yeah. that. I'm gonna try that when it's, I'm teaching. Um, you know, I use it just surgically, so it's it's always an individual thing targeted, at uh -huh. right, mm -hmm. rather than some general instruction. But right. um, but uh, you, when you see that person who you know, you know, because you've seen how they've done the other posture, so you know that they that you think they're generally capable, but they're stuck in a certain understanding of the dynamic. Then it, it's good for mm -hmm. that kind of student. So, like, Sundar yeah. has been practicing for ten years, but still, uh -huh. Pashimoto Asana is a real challenge for him, and it's not because he's stiff; it's because he's he's engaging incorrectly in the posture. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like that. I think yeah, you say that, um, Kathy's teaching flat back because you know when you you say these things, but they're the result, right? So it's like that's you. The I know. Ultimately, I know. will take I you know. potentially to a flat back, but you can't 
make a flat back that's impossible right <laughs> so, yeah right and they have started teaching that wrong way in my studio yes. and it makes me crazy yeah. but yeah. i just yeah. teach my class i do the best i can you know yeah absolutely that's yeah. Chico, welcome Mashika. I think, uh, you know, yeah. another component oh, of that, oh, oh, hi, Yoshiko, <laughs> good to see you, is I think when we, st ever, uh, when students, including ourselves, start a, pot a posture, especially as we're beginning our practice, we, uh, we, without us even knowing it, I think there's a little bit of tension we begin with. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Right? So, and I, I think that's through practice, too, that we realize, you know, that just even starting from the very beginning of the setup, Right. To start to just think about it and be present and relax in it, because I think what's happening, too, is like in stretching pose. I think we're automatically we don't know it, but we're we're a second ahead of ourselves and have probably tightened everything up. And then we're asking ourselves to sort of relax into it. You know, so we're like that, that, you know, what you said to Gotti, Matt, that makes me think of throwing, you know, cold water on somebody to sort of wake them up that that idea you know, once we have those aha moments within ourselves, then it starts to like bleed into everything else, yeah. right? That we're doing all, all the postures, right? Yeah, like yeah. you start to question, oh, wait a minute, am I doing the same, you know, you know, transaction or context in all yeah. of these postures? I mean, that's how, you know, I had to learn myself too. I think a lot of us start a practice with re more resistance than we think, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think it's very interesting once you've seen it in Pashmata Asana and then you look at every other posture where you're holding one body part and pulling. And then you start to go back and look at each of them like Padahastasana and you say, what am I pulling and which direction am I pulling it? So, for instance, for me, for the longest time, for like six, seven, eight years of doing Padahastasana, I was pulling my heels towards me. Mm. And it was like one moment I was in there and I was kind of exhausted and I, and I was kind of tired and I just relaxed for a moment and just stopped pulling. And then I just, and then I was really tired. So I didn't like fully engage. So I just started to gently pull. And then I was suddenly realized, oh, oh, I was meant to be pulling my body towards my feet, not my heels towards my body. And then suddenly the whole equation of that posture changed. Yeah. Just like Pashimoda Asana. So yeah. you know, instead of my back tightening and rounding, yeah. it lengthened and released. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it's, it's really interesting. And the same thing, of course, with uh, standing boat pulling, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's, what's happening with that yeah. grip and where is the which directions are the energies moving in yeah um yeah angie did you have a a a, a question or a topic that you wanted to explore well you know honestly i um i, I taught my third class ever today oh good um, yes. <laughs> and it's been going right thank you thank you but i'm finally watching bodies because my practice, I mean, you all, see, I mean, I, I'm just, it's just me in the mirror and the, and the teacher's voice. And I, I never really look around. So it's been fascinating to watch all these different bodies have all these different challenges with different postures. So I was just, my hope to on here, just because one, I just wanted to spend a little time with all of you guys. But two, I just wanted to hear questions and hear answers and feedback as I'm starting this journey. Very smart. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Soak up as much as you can whenever you can, especially now with COVID and Zoom. You're smart to do that. Yeah. 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 Join in on all the things that we do. I'm proud of you. Get get yoga out there. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um. No, uh, you're too old. You can't have any candy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I in, yeah, in, the more practice you take as you and Matt and Sarah, as you know, the more questions you have. Is, oh my is God, that yeah. true? Um, I'm rereading, as many of you may know, because I, I say it in class sometimes, I'm rereading both the blue and the orange book mm -hmm. um, of Bikrams. And I'm now at, I'm, I'm doing it rather slowly. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yes, I know. They're both treasures. They really are. If you don't have them, Angie and Yoshiko, please get them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll do yourself a, a well of service, Angie, by reading it now with your more seasoned, you know, eyes and experience you've had. Anyway, in separate um, in separate leg um, stretching, um, he doesn't have you roll forward like a wheel. Did you notice that, Matt, when you were studying the postures? 
he he actually the way he has you get into that posture um is the reason why i bring it up is because it's exactly what you were talking about matt is a hundred percent relaxation Mm. i i'm still like that's why it's a question for me i've tried it i tried to think about it in my in my personal class today thus my hair i just got done with class um and i didn't i still don't understand it which is kind of the journey of studying you know it's the journey of studying right is to try to comprehend it but i I, um, one of the things that he said that I really liked, um, is for those that uh, are, are in that stuck position where their knees are bent or hands are on the floor, right? He has them in the book, he has them bend their elbows. So I had Chris Alessio do that today and somebody else, uh, do that where, you know, as they're, they're, they're their knees are bending if they walk forward a little bit, right? You know, their legs can be straight and they get the stretch in the hamstrings. And then once they bend the elbows and the elbows touch the floor, all their legs get even more of a stretch. And then they're able to walk back until they get the grip. Interesting. So it's like an intermediate step before, because, you know, sometimes they're stuck. <laughs> like, yeah. like, if you're as interested in this, which is good, that's yeah, a good yeah. sign. Like uh, Pete Metralis, right? Like a uh, Chuck uh, Bombalin. They've been in that same thing for years. You know, yeah. they're... And that's actually so, how... Um, that's that's how the Iyengas teach that, yes. that their wide-legged stretching posture. That they Typically, the entry is they start with uh, straight arms on the floor underneath the shoulders... Um, work on the legs and, and getting the hips, and then the bend the elbows. Bend the elbows. Yes. And then, depending on which variation, they might grab the feet just like we do. Um, or you can walk all the yeah. way back if you can do it. The um, elbows go, and you yeah. go between the legs like we would ultimately, but the elbows are bent all yeah. the way back behind you. So that also has a progression. But they're, but they're, well, but, and I think that makes sense because yeah. the thing is, is you don't want bent knees, Angie. No bent knees in no that posture. Knees. No, yeah. no, no. Okay, yeah. so. So that, I mean, you'll hear, right, there's priorities of the posture, like another one that Cynthia and I happen to be talking about during Diane's class, because in Half Tortoise, right away, she says, um, forehead on the floor, little baby fingers touching the floor, meaning they're already there, mm-hmm. yeah. right? They're already there. And so there's some times confusion in that posture, but the priority in that posture, right, is hips on your heels, yeah. right? Yeah. So in fact, Lenora... Um, a little shout out to Lenora because she couldn't make it to the Q and A, but she asked a question in advance on the on Facebook, oh. and so she asked about the hips on the heels, and yeah, uh, so we kind of went you know around that that you know hips on the heels is is an action. It, it's not just that gravity has you slumping into your heels. You're yeah. an activity of keeping your hips on your heels in that posture, um, which you know as a beginner you may not at first be related to to the you know have a connection to that action uh, yeah that's hard that's yeah. hard it's, yeah. it is hard to keep your it, hips on your heels it's interesting that you brought up relaxing in that posture because the last q a michael had been on and he'd said um well people say relax your hips to him and i said this i don't know it's going to help you and now i kind of get what people are saying but i still it's quite subtle yeah, it's like the, the you got to know how to get the butt to go down and spread, kind of. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's 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 not it's not an easy action to make. No, it's, it's not. Like, no, it, it's <laughs> not. And I remember Michael saying that last time too. And I think part of part of it is just at least having your mind think relaxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that part starts to relax because yeah. I yeah. I agree with you. It's like how do you do that? I'm not sure you do it. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. Know, right. Yeah. I think the problem is that, that you know, um, for some people who are very stiff in that and have very difficulty doing forward bends like Michael, um, uh, you know, many people like that, is that they haven't really fully differentiated the thigh muscles from the hip muscles. And so, you know, in that situation, your thigh muscles should be actively bringing the, bringing the hips down towards the heel. But obviously the hip muscles, the glute muscles need to be relaxing to allow for the forward yes. bending to take place. So if you tighten your butt, then you're, you're stuck and you're not able to forward fold. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, then your hips come up off the heel because mm-hmm. there's something has to give. Which uh-huh. makes me think, though, too, Matt, that Michael would be a good one to put the elbows on the floor. Because I think his, if his mind went to his elbows, I bet you he would relax the hips. Yes, yes. You know, yes. if you think about it, right? 
But yeah. sometimes you're getting them to do one action and it takes their mind off of something that they're holding on to. Yes. You know? I saw, I saw yeah. um, um, uh, like a, if you like, a therapeutic experiment in that, that forward bending for people who had that stiffness had done once, which was very nice, which was you had somebody uh, bend forward just to a 90 degree angle and put their hands on a chair and push their hips back to really get the folding of the body and the engagement of their legs. And then it was dropped down to the seat of the chair. So now they're here. Then it was dropped down to the halfway down the legs of the chair. And, and so you were doing it by progression. But at each step, you were figuring out what needed to happen, get it happening, then go a little bit further, keep it happening, go a little bit further, keep it happening, go a little bit further. Versus some people who, you know, obviously they come to a certain point And as soon as they hit the point of resistance, they just start to yes. bend the spine. Yes. But of course, at that point, it, nothing's happening. You've, you've right. lost the, the connection. Right. And Michael's a good example where having him do that might be very beneficial. Um, and he might like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, if I see him next in class, I'll tell him and, and you right. guys too. Because all the other thing it has too is a little bit, I could tell in Chris Alessio today that, you know, um, and, and Angie and Yoshiko too, like it, if – if they're able to do that and they feel something different, it's like an inspiring. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. You know. It's, then, it's, it's also that aha moment. Yes. So yeah. Like, exactly. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. I felt that. Right. Like after three years, I feel something for the yes. first time. Yes. Right. And yes. it gives yes. confidence to keep going. Those are big moments. You know. And you might call it waking it up. For example, I mean, some people go into that posture like me. That movement of the hips was almost automatic. Of course, yeah. Yeah, improved it, but it was almost, yeah. all first class. It was almost automatic. Yeah, was rounding the spine, standing up, or in rabbit was like not. Also, I didn't even know where to right. start. Hmm. So, but then you feel so you get something, and right. that wake starts to wake. Yes, up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you're on a different journey, right? You've exactly. noticed something. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think about you, Sarah, in that uh, in the blue book. Did you see? I think it's Marion. When she does that posture, I mean, uh, from the side profile view, you guys, you can't even see her body. Yes, it's wonderful when that's her done. body. I've yeah. I don't. I, I I've I've seen maybe that only a few times in yeah. my twenty years of. I, that's very hard to do. Yes, that's, um, it. that's it. Yeah, look at that, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh, right? You can yeah. see your boobs on the other side yeah. of her legs. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> you can. That's oh amazing. My God. That's amazing. Cool. That's a, yeah. yeah. Isn't that Sarah, that's your net you gotta you gotta absorb that picture. Yeah. That's that's yeah. your next one because yeah. you're close to that. I, I I looked I was in the corner today cheating. I was looking in the side mirror of and I I'm like, you know. I can go down and touch my forehead, but I've those last few inches, you yeah, guys, that, take that, years, that, and yeah. years and years and yeah. years <laughs> to close in. Yeah. Uh, but you got to keep trying. You, you know? have to let yourself, you have to do what Bikram would say and let your neck go then. You have to, well, you, don't, you can't, at that point, the chin can't be even. Mm -hmm. Correct. Bit, but yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah, and Georgia it, yeah. has me do that, but it's yeah. still not. It's still yeah. not that. It's still yeah. not that. But yeah, if you read that, just what you're saying, Beacon will say, no, you're supposed to relax in this. It's totally yeah. you should be relaxing in this posture. So, yeah. you know, something for myself and maybe you know for you guys. Oh, it's interesting, isn't interesting. it? I know yeah. before we started doing it in anger, and she said, "Well, now we've been doing all this stuff with contracting the hips," and she said, "Now you relax the butt muscles, you relax all of that, and it's like relax the gro groins, relax." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" You're like, I what? That. And it's the same. It's the same principle as Bikram. Yeah. 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 And then and then yeah. notice how right after that we go right into triangle where nothing is relaxed. Think... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yoshika, do you have any questions or anything to say? Well, you know, for, for that conversation um, right now is I, I I can't even breathe if I try to go really deep to the sandwich things. So how can I keep myself breathing? That's to a good do question. That? That's a great question. <laughs> I, I have a, you know, and this is in the blue book too, and we say it in class, but, you know, the moment that you're losing your breath, you know you need to back off. Right. <laughs> You've gone too far. Right. Because the breathing is essential. I mean, every time you exhale is really when you're nourishing that part of the body that's tight. Okay. Right. So you don't okay. want a labored breath. But, you know, like, you know, if you find that you can do little 
in and inhales and exhales like little yeah. sips of air in and out through the nose. You know, and Bikram will say that even in his classes, right, as a beginner, it's normal to hold your breath a little bit and maybe little sips of air in and out through the nose until you finally can have those. Not many postures do you have the big breaths like you're able to do in fix firm. Like fix firm, you can have a big breath in, but not so much that one. But if it's too labored like you think it is, then I think you need to, you know, back off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You know? I yeah. I the key is there is that you're – the, the breathlessness is because you've got to the point where your nervous system is tensing. Yeah. And in the tensing, you right. can't breathe as much. Right. And so, like uh, Michelle said, you back off, but only a little bit. You back off a tiny little bit till you find the threshold where you can get the, the nervous system kind of gets back into a semi-normal state where you can breathe. And yeah. then you move forward again from there, but slowly. And the more, the more times you repeat that, your capacity yeah. to go into that space increases. It's the same thing as a beginner. When they do pranayama breathing, mm -hmm. I mean, day one, you know, there's a certain point in the breath where their nervous system is just shut down. It's just locked up mm -hmm. and they can't, they can't bring any more air into their lungs. Everything's kind of tensing. And then they're just waiting for the teacher to say, exhale, they're like, ah, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's it's not a lung capacity issue. It's it's the activation of the nervous system. So, for instance, in pranayama breathing, when it's taught as a discipline outside of a, a class like a Bikram, where you know we have the two breathing exercises at the beginning and the end, there are many pranayama breathing exercises, but they all rely on that principle that there is an inhale, there is a hold, there's an exhale. And there's a hold and playing around with how long the inhale versus the exhale are or how long the hold of a full lung versus the hold of an empty lung are are ways of interacting with your nervous system to give you more facility more capability in that scenario and you effectively get to play with that in the posture and so you yeah. just you just hit the wall of that mm -hmm. and like michelle said just back off a little bit yeah of because, you know, Matt is so elaborate how he's saying it. it's so true. But, you know, what, what he's explaining is the whole class. That's stretching. That is stretching, right? You have to use your breathing to help you stretch. And in every posture, we're trying to find that threshold. So good for you, right? So you passed it a little bit too much, is right? So now you've got to go back okay. and find that threshold where you're able to breathe. And then uh, with that exhale is allowing whatever to open up and stretch or relax, you know? I you know, you go, go a little bit the, deeper. I guess it's mm -hmm. important to be on the at the edge, I guess, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking if you go back, if we go back to the beginning of the conversation, I'm wondering if the shoulders are too close to the ears, whether that makes it harder to breathe. I think it did when mine were. Uh, it was more everything's yeah. really tensed up. So the, what we were saying about, um, we keep often we keep saying in those sandwich postures, shoulders away from the ears, and then what do you do? How do you do it? But what Matt said at the beginning, to pull the body down, mm. then mm. the shoulders can stay more down towards the hips. Yeah. And then you have more expanse in the chest. I think this is my experience. Since yes. I learned to do it, I can breathe better yes. in those I mean, postures. you you can do yeah. this as a lot of experiments. So if you grab the side of, you know, if you've got a kitchen counter and you just grab the side of it, so you've got a good, powerful grip, and you lean and you pull the counter like you were trying to pull the counter towards you, you will feel that the whole center part of your body tightens up. Your lower back tightens up. Your lungs tighten up. Your shoulders tighten up. Your neck tightens up. Everything tenses. And it actually gets harder to breathe. But, you know, maybe you notice, maybe you don't notice that you're actually, it's got a little bit harder to breathe versus if you try and pull the counter towards you, no, I'm, I'm it's like, yeah. it's like, it's effortless. I mean, when you're standing in your kitchen, it's effortless to pull yourself towards the counter because you're not resisting it. And so they tell Sarah's point, you know, all that tension. So yeah, in the sandwich postures, I would definitely look to say what Sarah said, that look to see if you can, relax your shoulders and your back and work on pulling yourself your head towards the feet or head towards the floor depending on which posture it is all right got it play with that. yeah i'll try <laughs> yeah yeah remember you guys too with this this helps this helped me a lot also was you know knowing the trajectories of every posture like in our in our sequence we're either moving right left um you know up down up uh, forward and back that's it yeah. Yes, that's it. And, and that helps a lot with 
like even in stretching, when we started this conversation to use what you guys are saying, right, you're moving forward. And I think a lot of times, too, because this part of the body tends to be for most people a block, it doesn't have its own kind of movement and isolation, you know, you it's hard, right, to think the body going forward, your whole body just wants to like, you know, go forward, including the shoulders. Mm -hmm. But you know, body forward, think about it It doesn't mean that your shoulders hunch up, Mm -hmm. right, you're going forward. Mm -hmm. So you're going padahastasana, you're going down backward bends, you're going back, you guys, if you listen to Bikram's two CDs, he will tell you to stretch back behind you. He keeps telling you to stretch back, right? And I was talking to Sarah about it the other day. I find it fascinating that Emmy will say, the, you have to think that the majority of your weight is behind you. So your weight in your heels, hips forward, and you're going, you're trying to go back, you know, stretch back behind you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Those are things that help me even in standing bow, um, you know, even in standing head to knee, right, you know, body down, like you bring it down, right. And then, you know, so, so um, the direction of where you're going in the postures, again, it's our thoughts, it's our concentration, right, what we think, and then our body will follow. Right. Yes. And that they're simple as well. There's nothing to work They're simple, right. Exactly. If you point is down, down <laughs> think is forward is forward yeah. and even though you might have different conception of the posture than that you have to, if you think of it how do you achieve that yes yeah yeah yes it's most interesting and I'll, I'll bring the be- pull the elbows down, down right towards the floor Lord, yeah. <laughs> and, I, I, and, and we say that all the time but it was only it only penetrated me after a long time me too down towards the floor absolutely right. me, yes. me, me too you know <laughs> you know balancing stick you know forward right oh, you yes. go forward bring yes. your body down yeah. and uh, yes. even in in the blue book you know bikram is like you are one piece you are one piece, nothing breaks. Arms yes. and head together, right? You're one piece going down and forward. <laughs> oh, I've got one that I learned that I really understood it. And now I say it a lot because Bikram always says, you don't have the knee, you don't have the elbows. Yeah. And I understood that they were meant to be locked, they were meant to be straight, but I didn't really understand how straight. And then um, my Iyengar teacher said, it's like there's no joint hmm. straight up and down. Yeah. And I start saying it all the time now because it's like it's literally you're get, trying to get to the point where there's there's no joint. Now, flexible person, it seems to me, has more likelihood of it being popping out one way or the other. So then what do you have to do extra as a flexible person to get that no jointedness? You know, it's more strength. Like, more strength, mm-hmm. yes, more muscles. More I palms together, more the elbows. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have to squeeze the elbows towards each other yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's most yeah. interesting. Yeah. But I, I didn't understand it properly. I half understood it. Yeah. And then I really got it. Yeah. Well, the gestures of these postures, isn't it fascinating, you guys, how the arms and the legs, the, we use the limbs to manipulate the spine. Hmm. Right? I mean, that's why we say in, in Salabhasana, for instance, I mean, as soon as you bend the knees, then the weight's in the hips. Yes. Right? right. I mean, you have to have your your legs in, in Porta Salabhasana, a better example, right? Your arms out and your legs locked because you're trying to manipulate the center of the spine. I mean, half moon, your legs have to be straight, arms straight to get into the, to the, the spine. So, and as a teacher, you can see it a little bit better. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like, um, I feel like I'm sharing with you guys more Sorry, more than just the Q&A, but watching students go from Zoom back to the yoga room, there's two things I'm seeing. One, I feel like everybody's standing head to knee grips. I don't know what happened. Nobody's got the good grip anymore. <laughs> it's their slipping. Oh, yeah, the grip. I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. So on Zoom this morning, I'm looking at, I'm looking at their grips, making sure they have, you know, um, the tight grips. But also... Um, there's moments in the posture, you guys, that that as practitioners, you have to just know that you're committed to that pose. No more readjusting. That that is it. And I I have to do. I had to teach that to myself because I used to be a adjuster all the time, and now now I enjoy not doing it as much as maybe as I should be doing it actually. But my point is is that the moment you do a little readjustment and it the eyes on the podium can see it better, Matt and Sarah and, and Angie, um, you you your posture is over. It it literally is 
not so when you when you when you're trying to like when you see somebody in rabbit posture trying to get the grip on their heels better and then not only do they move their hands but now they've moved their head they've moved their the, it's done mm-hmm. it's like you have to start over again right mm-hmm. so yes. um my point being and i don't know made me think of this is that you know you have to find that posture but you just gotta just own it right and then just hold it and i yeah i guess what i'm saying is i'm noticing that there's a lot more adjusting that's happening i think in the postures um than i've seen in the last over the last year so mm-hmm. yeah just have to own it well the says up the beginning of the posture would be the place for adjusting right so correct we're, we're getting everything in the right place yeah and then I suppose that you have to do what you can do that day with that correct setup. Uh, yeah, that's and then good. that's it, right, and be happy and, with it. Oh, I know what made me think of it when you were talking about half moon, and I'm thinking about my half moon. Mm. 100% the same thing, you know, so I have to be careful because if I readjust too much, then I'm not really, then I'm done with the posture, you know? Mm. You know, I have to self-correct a, a little bit, mm. so... I'm trying right now in my half moon to make sure my intercostals, you know, and I'm not bent, I'm not falling too much, right? right? Yeah. You know, I'm going up and over, you know. Yeah, actually, on, um, on that half moon front, I, I saw a, a cute little learning exercise about half moon done at a workshop by Lucas Miles. Um, oh. He, he, he got um, somebody to stand up at the, right next to the mirror and, and in half moon and stretch up. And then he drew a, a horizontal line on the mirror where their maximum reach of their stretch was, where their fingertips were. And it just, he got, had a rule and he drew a straight line. And he said, okay, now bend to the right and keep your fingertips on the line. Okay. So you, so as you bent, you had to stretch even more and even more and even wow. more. Wow. Very few people could do it uh, or, or go very far, but that, but boy, they were doing good half moons. Yeah. And, and so, because it was forcing you to really right. on the extent yeah. of the spine. Oh, I'm going to think a, of that next time. A, well, yeah, you know, yeah, a, you yeah. Know, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Look how far I can come down, right. even though it's a right. mess. Right, you know? um, right. Well, yeah. I like the end. That's great, Matt. I'm going to think of that next when I take class tomorrow. That's that's good. That's that's. Yes, I, I, I told um, Robin, you know, for the, one of our students that. You know what we should have you know is a little training is a is a little uh, electrical wire um you know like those lights that hang on wires and then a little you know a little electrode on your fingertip and then and then as soon as your finger leaves the wire the a buzzer sounds so then it, it's like that um that surgery game where you have to pick out body parts operation. operation yeah it'll be like a training aid for half moon and really, you know the moment you stop stretching a buzzer goes off and you're oh, okay i've got to stretch up more you know oh my gosh that's a good analogy remember that game yeah. you had the tweezers you had to take the bone yeah. out and not hit the side yeah, yeah. oh that's that's great. Uh, um, yeah. Andy, I was going to ask a question for you. So, um, you know, your practice is fabulous. Which posture do you find the most challenging and what aspect of it do you find the most challenging and why? And why do you think that is? That has changed over the course of time, as I'm sure it does for everybody. Right now, I would say standing head to knee is the most challenging thing because I've gone from I mean, locking back in my knees and pull, and thinking that I was completely pulling up my quad or, you know, engaging my legs because I was pulling up my quad so much, you know, that um, to being able to stand with that straight leg and yeah. feeling what that feels like. And a lot of it, I know, you know, when I turn to the side, I've got a mirror where the camera is. And so what I'm doing is because sometimes I can't quite feel exactly everything, but I can see it. And then if I can see it, then I can know, okay, this is, this is right. This is what I'm going to do. But now, like once I get down um, to where my elbows are getting close to my calves, I don't know, there's just something in and around the knee joint where I'm like, oh no, I all of a sudden I've locked back in it. Oh no, I don't know. Have I locked it? I don't know if I have. And it's just, mm-hmm. you know, as a former professional dancer, I have done nothing but use my body for my entire life. I'm like, wait a minute. I can't even decide if my knee is straight or not. <laughs> so, so yeah, I guess it's just relearning, um, you know, what that feels like. And in, in ballet, it's so different because in, in ballet, you're in the turned out position and you have so much weight in the balls of your feet. Um, yeah. 
And so I'm, I learned quickly, you know, even with hyperextended knees to be on a straight leg, but turned out because you engage all your deep rotators and there's that wrapping sensation of your muscles. Mm -hmm. And so that, and so to not have that as a tool has been challenging, you know, because you can't engage your rotators and stand in a neutral position. Yeah. Yes. No. I am. Yeah. Yeah. As you say, I, 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 I heard, um, uh, again, another teaching tool of visualization for a, a, an upright locked knee. That well, one one tip, of course, is when Bikram says thigh muscles contracted, he doesn't just mean the quadriceps. He means the thigh muscles, like all of yeah. them. Um, the ones on the inside, the ones on the outside. So that that outside ones are pulling the hip in. The inside ones are pulling in and pulling back. The front, the back, everything solid concrete. Um, but um, a good training analogy for the mind in that posture, especially for somebody who's already got a certain facility with it, is visualize that your leg is standing inside a big tube, a big plastic tube, upright tube that's wide, you know, it's big enough for your leg to be there, but you can't touch the sides, just like the game of operation. You can't let the thigh go out. You can't let the thighs come in. You can't let them go back and you can't let them go forward. You've got to keep everything sucked in. So all of the muscles of your leg need to be sucking into the bone and tightening up so it's solid and concrete. And then you have a beautifully upright leg. And of course, it doesn't matter if you're prone to hyperextension or that's irrelevant at that point because your leg is muscularly straight an absolutely solid concrete and, and it's 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 a it's a nice exercise to do that because you know people especially if you've been practicing for a little while and you found it relatively easy to quote unquote lock the knee it'd be very easy to get to the point where when you look at you and standing head knee you're really leaning back on your heel because it's easy for you to straighten the leg like that and so there's a lot of engagement of the quadriceps at the front of the leg but there's very little engagement on the sides or the back of the leg mm-hmm. and you're actually kind of cheating because you're actually leaning backwards into the heel and that's not i mean as you discover because you're relearning head to knee that's that's not a long-term uh, healthy way to practice yeah, yeah. You know, the other interesting thing that as I've been relearning that particular posture and all of them, like when you get to the part about um, don't bring the, the weight to the side of your, you know, distribute the weight equally over your standing foot, don't bring it to the side. You know, I can feel my inner thighs so much more when I absolutely make sure, you know, that metatarsal joint of your big yeah. toe is like, you know, flat. Yeah. And, and I didn't even realize I was rolling out on my feet, you know, yeah. until this whole thing with my, my knee started I'm like, okay. So that, and so I just try to, you know, it's kind of like stacking, you know, each thing. It up. is, it is, but yeah. that's so good for you to have that awareness. That's amazing. That is really hard for people. Like you said, it's hard to feel all the weight evenly distributed, yeah. right? You know, another, another way to do it, you guys is, I think we underestimate the value of tree pose. I mean, that standing leg is your lamppost. And so, you know, you have the ability to look in the mirror and really sort of feel Angie and see, you know, that exercise that Matt's talking about, all the weight evenly distributed underneath the foot equally the same. Well, you can look at your hips and notice if one is down or back or forward, right? And then correct it. Use more of the inner thighs. And I do that. When I do that in tree pose, then I know the next day, because I play with my standing head to knee a lot too, because I can tell even if it's a millimeter that I'm leaning a little bit on the outside edge of my foot, right? I can see it in the mirror, right? Maybe the teacher can't see it, but if I'm being honest with myself and just yeah, a little bit over and I got to bring it back in and keep kicking my heel forward. So I'll say to myself, good information. And then in tree pose, I play with it a little bit, right? You know, I want to know, you know, can I get that weight evenly distributed? So just another aspect of it too, right? It's the repetition over and over again. Yes. You know, another, I'm sorry. Um, No, go on, Angie. Another interesting thing um, that ever since I've been kind of relearning the standing leg thing and all of that, before, if I've lost my balance in a posture, if something was going wrong, like that my in standing um, or standing bow, you know, instead of my foot being up here, it's over here. So everything was something was out. Now, if when I am absolutely focused and concentrated on that standing leg being, you know, the lamppost. If I lose my balance, it's because I lost my focus. <laughs> yes. Like, dang it, that's what they've been saying for seven years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's no, interesting. And it totally, every single time I fall, I was like, oh, shoot. I, I lost. I thought about dinner, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it came up today in class that there's also another scenario, and isn't that the tree that it can be when you first learn to do something right, you lose your balance. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the most interesting? Yes. Thing? Falling out of tree when you've got that leg in the right place. It happened to someone I was teaching today. Everything in the right place, she falls out, but she was really happy because she could feel it. She felt the change. The second side, she did it. And it was, a, it's interesting. Sometimes you can get it all right. And it, you're so unfamiliar, you fall out. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. No, that's true though, right? I mean, think about it. You're building new brain receptors yes. and brain. Yes. You know, for me, you guys, I can focus so much better on my right side. My left side, woo, just calls it. I always notice it in standing bow. And I have to focus a little bit harder on my left side. I'll be trailing off into some some weird thought. My right side, I you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with my right and left brain or whatever, right? But it's funny how you catch yourself, right? You know, we were talking about that standing head to knee. That standing head to knee when I'm in the first set, the first side, the first part, the second part, the third part. It's like I have nothing in my brain. It's like almost like a withdrawal of the senses. As soon as I start to put my head down, it's like my brains fly away. It's like I'm like a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I also have a very hard time to do the standing head on me when I as soon as I started to do that I think it matters where I watch you know in a slow really really slowly to going down and down and then and try not to lose balance but I do it, it's never yeah. never it's yeah. so difficult and so to keep the, my balance for, to do yeah. that it's not yeah. Like a flexibility, I I can I can touch no. my knee to knee, my yeah. knee. That's not right. a problem. It's not it's it's not a, it's not that at all. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so think about it, Michelle. I mean, there there are some tips of, for competition. Yeah. 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 yeah and you know what I was gonna it. say. Thank you, Matt. What I was gonna say to add to that, though, if you think about it, you guys, that's why standing head to knee is clearly the most hardest posture. I mean, let alone you got to balance, kick out, elbows go below the calf, all that stuff. And then you've got to start moving your eyesight from one spot now down to the floor to your stomach. I mean, it's huge, right? You know, there's no other posture like it. And if you watch competitions, and I, I did a workshop a couple weeks ago of which Matt and Sarah were in there. But, you know, if you study them a little bit, I mean, the Zeb Homisons, the Joseph Insinias, the Bell Carpenters, the Emily uh, Carpenter at the time. I mean, they can do all kinds of crazy postures, you know, leg over the head and tiger scorpion. and But get the head on the knee and hold it and standing bow and hold it. No fall out, it, I don't know how many how many times. So it is a journey. And I think, um, Yoshiko, one of the, the biggest things about that posture is you have to keep doing it. You just have to keep trying every day to start looking at the floor. You know, so one of the exercises that we did and Bikram encourages you to do is when you have the stamina, um, and you can bring, you know, that that third part, you're kicking your heel, you have your foot in and your elbows go down, come down with your body more than more than maybe you have really bring the body down more. So your elbows go a little bit lower, right, and then start to shift your head and just be careful that your eyes don't start to like, you know, they start to move around a lot. Try to bring your eyes on one spot on the floor, even when you're bringing your head down and bring it down to your shin. Just maybe keep it there, right? And then the final part is to keep kicking that heel forward, right? And then your eyes start to go up a little bit, but you know, not, not, don't let your eyes shift a lot until eventually mine aren't still on my stomach. My, my, how I do my head on my knee is probably the very top of my thigh. I still am not quite looking at my stomach. Don't tell the judges that, but my head's on my knee, you know. Oh, you're busted so, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Um, but, but yeah, and I honestly think talking with uh, Sarah about your brain is taking in new information. It's a whole new journey. 
you know, all of a sudden you're, you, you've got, you know, you've got your standing leg locked. You've, you've kicked and now finally you have an L like Linda all the way to evenly distributed. Then finally you can bring, you know, your elbows down, you know, touching the calf muscles and then eventually they go below. Now you're ready. Oh my God. You know, now it's a whole new journey, extra strength as Bikram says, right? To start to bring, you know, you have to keep kicking the heel forward and then bring your body down, head down forehead on the knee and then coming up is a whole nother journey which we practice too that's even you know that's another journey but it's worth it i mean the whole point is concentration determination self-control patience and faith right that the whole point i mean of course is the elevating the heart standing locked out leg helps your spine but also to keep your mind in your brain right and stay focused right that's that's hard to do me i for me right now in my journey i'm losing gas very i i can't seem to hold the posture um the duration right now hmm. so uh, i don't know about you guys but i am really working hard in my pranayamas because of that for some reason i feel like i've lost some of my energy um during covid my my stamina my endurance so that's that's my that's been my my journey. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that helped at all, Yoshiko. But you know, you got to keep trying. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You, and, and you got to go slow. So yeah. so it seems yeah. I don't have to watch the floor. Maybe maybe I can just watch the my knee. Or, or how how is that correct? Well, one one thing that um, I did when I was started to work on this, uh, actually it was Nicole Duke that had given me the tip, which is that when I'm, when I'm at that stage where I've got my elbows down, I've brought my body down as much as I can, then I look down at my big toe. Big toe? Yeah, so, you know, on the standing foot. So, so then I've got a, a clear anchor foot. So I look down before yep. it comes down. Mm-hmm. So the eyes go down, I can see my big toe, and then with my eyes anchored on my big toe, I can start to bring my head in, still looking at my big toe. And then once I've got my chin in, then I can work on that journey of bringing my uh, eyes back and look at myself, yeah. which is at the point at which I typically fall out uh, <laughs> as soon as I move the eyes again, you know. Okay. But that's a good idea. Find that one yeah. anchor point for your eyes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Play with it. Yeah. The um, yeah, Angie, you were saying about not knowing if your leg is straight um you know uh, one uh, another exercise in the realm of locking the knees that's really good if you've already got a pretty decent facility with it, the, the basics is just sitting down on the floor with the legs out in front of you and try to lock the knee so as in the beginning series we talk about flexing the foot so the heel comes off the floor um which you know in the beginning series that's a very good technique to help somebody get to locking the knee but if you want to go beyond that to really experience a more comprehensive locking of the knee kick the heel forward so the heel comes slightly off the floor and without the heel retreating try to bring the heel down towards the floor but you've got to keep extending the leg and then you start to realize that some of the subtler muscles involved in stabilizing the leg have to really work over time to maintain that complete yeah. straightness of the leg. And then you'll have a truly straight leg. Hmm. Um, and you can do that on the floor and you're just sitting down, but it's exhausting. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, you're, you're very actively extending the leg. And so it's very exhausting. But because you're sitting down, of course, you've got the energy to be able to concentrate on the aspects of how it's exhausting and whether you're really doing it or not. And obviously, the moment the heel retreats, you've lost it. So you just reset and start again. Um, yeah, I'll try that. And that's it's humbling. I mean, I found it deeply humbling exercise because like, oh, my God, I have to start again. I have to learn this all again from scratch again. But again, that, that wonderful phrase about start again, you know, start yeah. again from scratch. Yeah. You know, it, 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 we every day, every posture yeah. starting again from scratch. Yeah. And don't underestimate you guys, you know, in my in my years of training back in 2001 and the years after that, Maybe you remember this, Kathy. I mean, you were told to kill yourself in half moon. And we don't kind of really say that stuff anymore. But half moon, awkward eagle are prepping you for standing head to knee. And in particular, I think half moon. Because you really got to do your, you've got to remember, um, standing head to knee, even though you're rounding your spine, there's a lifted action. You know, so your hamstrings have to be open, Angie, right, too? 
So Padahastasana and Half Moon, you really want to come up just like we were talking about in Half Moon with, you know, the exercise. You want to come up out of the waist. You want to make space. If you don't have enough space, you know, you're in awkward posture. You're extending your spine, getting your legs ready. You're getting your joints ready and eagle making space. You're not going to have a good head to knee. Don't you think the legs also, because you start off it with a standing, you're just standing in one spot, like, you know, just standing in, in half moon before you start it. So then immediately you can start, what am I doing my legs? Then in awkward, you have to use the legs correctly, building up the muscles that you're going to use in standing here to knee. Yeah. And the same thing in eagle. Now, this was not apparent to me when I just exploited my flexibility, but now that I think of it, you're actually using the legs building up to using them. Correct, 100%. Yes. 100%. And Where both the legs. The thighs are, you yeah. Know. yeah. The kicking leg and the standing leg and the spine and your arms. Yes. I mean, all of it, you're warming up. So that's a good point. So you, you just read the, the kicking leg. So you've warmed it all up. There's the line in the dialogue. Um, second side, um, continuously kick the left leg forward until the both knees lock. Hmm. So what is that dynamic? Well, it's very simple. I mean, it, and it's the same same phenomena in standing bow pulling when we say stretch forward and try to touch the mirror and the same phenomena in balancing it when you straight stretch forward, scapula coming out of the body, which is that the only way, it's the inevitable consequence of doing it, mm. that the more you push the heel forward, extend the leg, that leg will absolutely lock eventually mm. if you're doing it right. But the only way it can do that is to have a foundation from which to extend, which is the standing leg. So the more you push the heel forward, the more the standing leg has to strengthen to become the solid foundation that allows for you to pushing the heel forward. And so there's an inevitability of that, so of both can't things happening. Lock their standing leg could learn to lock it by kicking yes, the other leg because yeah. but the problem is, is that where beginners get lost in that posture uh, i mean lost you know just in the journey of the twist and turns of the journey is that they've held the foot and so just like we were talking about before about the pulling and what direction you're pulling a lot of people pull the foot towards them tightening their lower back bringing their weight backwards causing the standing leg to yeah. bend um, and it has to bend, otherwise they're going to fall over backwards. So the action of pulling the foot is actually putting a demand on the leg to bend versus the action of kicking the heel forward is putting a demand on the leg to straighten. And, well, and, and I, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm going to go back to half moon because a lot of what you're saying, Matt, and in half moon, you're trying to make space to open up your lower spine. Remember, your hamstring and your lower spine are so connected. The hamstring is tight, so is your lower spine. Your lower spine is tight, it's pulling on your hamstring. I mean, it's just, so your half moons, I'm going to go back to, you know, you've got to do your half moon. <laughs> you got to make sure you're really working hard to get the half moon because you need, in order to get what you're, you're, you're asking your body, Matt, is you've got to be open enough to do it. You have to stretch you have your spine. Think about that first forward bend. I mean, the first one to the second set is just, miles difference but it's trying to get open up the, the hamstrings and then think about eagle your your concentration has to start you're on one leg mm -hmm. right you're learning to balance right so that you can balance better in standing head to knee so those warm up and think about it you warm up with those three and then go right into standing head to knee <laughs> no messing around right you know i always thought that too i'm like wow we're doing breathing and then you go right into the spine like boom right away there's no there's no warm-up right it's like yes right away you know at 15 minutes in i always say that 15 minutes in you got your two sets of pranayama and your two sets of you know, half moon and it's, you're new, brand new, brand, brand new, brand spanking new. And it's just fascinating. Uh, yeah. Yes. You could try it as an experiment. If you, uh, you could do that principle of those two related things that like, if you have somebody you trust, hold your foot, the, the kicking leg foot, and you bend, start with your weight back with a slightly bent knee and have them very, very slowly pull your heel forward. You will find it virtually impossible not to straighten your standing leg. Yeah. 
Mm. At some point, you'll actually desperately straighten your leg because it's what your body needs to do to resist the possibility of falling forward. And, and so it, 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 you know, it's that beautiful inevitability and the same thing in the standing bow pulling pose, you know, it's like, it's like the more you stretch forward, the more the standing leg will straighten, the more the kicking leg will want to kick back and up to naturally counterbalance. Because of course we, we, we we have this conception that, you know, all the intelligence resides in our brains and in our conscious thinking, but most of the intelligence of our body is in our body. And our body yeah, knows yeah. how to move right. and counterbalance and, and how it needs to brace. So, you know, when I pull a book off a shelf, you know, a thousand muscle engagements happened in, in the space of one and a half seconds. And most of them were completely automatic um, based on a very loose idea of the instruction from the brain, which says, hey, I want to get the book off the shelf. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the things I think that's so nice about the Bikram style of teaching is that the instructions remain very simple. Yeah. Stretch forward and try to touch the mirror. I, I didn't list, you know, 17 anatomical elements of the arm and shoulder structure and, <laughs> you know, and tighten your rotator cuff and, and this and that, because and then I would have to lecture to you for six weeks just to train you ready to take your first class. I just said, try and touch the mirror. Yes. And if you, if you literally take the instruction as literally try to touch the front mirror, then suddenly something so so the, the thing i would invite us all to do and, and myself included is next time you practice and you hear any of these literal instructions try to do them yes i mean like literally observe yourself actually trying to touch the front mirror and then ask yourself the questions you're doing it am i actually trying to do that mm. am i actually trying to touch the front mirror in the various postures mm. Am I actually doing it? Because it's a very, it's a very interesting self-observation to explore that. Um, it, it opens doors in the mind. Um, yeah, and, and oh, it, oh right. And, yeah, and you know, <laughs> it goes back. Yeah. yeah, and Sarah, you and I were talking about this. I'm, I'm going back and rereading my teacher training notes from 2001. It's interesting you bring that point up, Matt, because Rajashree brings up two points, which are kind of like a little bit cringing or sort of like, you know, to think about, she's like, you know, the moment we tell you to, you know, uh, go touch the front mirror, or kick forward, and you have a little bit of that leaning back or resistance, it's a fear. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a whatever, whether it's an emotional one or something mm -hmm. that you're not, you're, you're moving through. So that hesitancy doesn't necessarily, like Matt saying, you know, have to be intellectual. There could be something in something instinct that is making you not want to do that, right? Which is why we need the yoga, because we, you want to, and, and Sarah, you and I were talking about that, just little bit little of bit. going like a yeah. little bit bolder, just yeah. a little bit off, off balance slightly. What's made us think about that, Matt, is the, the handstand challenge where Isak has you just slightly going beyond, right, that neutral position, yeah. right? Just a little bit where when you go forward to touch the mirror, right, oh, you're going to fall over if you don't kick hard enough. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, oh, yeah. you got to kick, you know, like yeah. that's that's the yin and the yang, right, the balance. So Rajashree is saying you're too far back. Uh, there's something going on there. You're holding yeah. back. Why? And I think, you know, to your point, that, that that's that's – that's also where the cleansing of the yoga happens. Yeah. You are, you're going beyond the threshold of whatever was comfortable. Um, and the cleansing is happening in, in ways that we couldn't even quantify or identify. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. it only matters that it's happening. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, you know, you might have resolved some childhood trauma in trying to touch the mirror. And like, great, fantastic. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to visit but, it. Yeah. But next time, try and touch the mirror. Maybe, you, you know, you'll, you'll understand algebra or something. There, there's a but, great <laughs> saying. Yeah, and that's awesome, Matt. There's a great saying. It's like, we don't need to shovel out the dark. We just need to turn the light on. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? You know, we spend too much time sometimes. Yes. It's like we don't yes. need to visit all that to turn the light on, right? And, yes. you know, and all it's that. the same thing, uh, you know, like uh, what you were saying earlier, Yoshiko, about, you know, how you get to a point where you can't breathe. That's the same thing. If you think about the expanse of your nervous system as in a more holistic way, is that you've just reached a boundary, a limit, a limit 
that is just temporary and so you've come up against it now you lean into it and work on the edge of it and it will expand and the yeah. it will melt away and then yeah. and, it, and this is not this is absolutely not just a physical phenomenon mm. You know, we, we're focusing on it in Hatha Yoga. We focus on it through a physical axis by physically moving and so on. But what's happening, it goes well beyond just the physical barrier of I could breathe better or I could bend better or I could, my arm was longer. I mean, it, it has an impact across the whole complexity of who we are. And, and I think that's where it just gets super awesome. You know, yeah, gets really, really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. And, and we don't need to know how it works. Right. Um, or why it works we only need to know that it does, it does work. work yeah so you know that's that's the beauty that's the of beauty this of it. yoga it really you know, is yeah that it yes. works what is everybody what is everybody enjoying working on what's like it could call it a problem but it's something you're enjoying working on i'm i've got two i've got toast down because he's getting better and better. I did my best one the other day. Well, that's because you actually go into the question now. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I used to have like, well, you're funny. I'd tell you the whole thing with that, but I didn't know how to, despite the fact I taught how to do it beginner style, I didn't know how to lift my own leg up properly. So there was always a little bit pulling on the knees, which did not pain exactly. It prevented me from going all the time. Then I didn't understand it, the stretching the spine. So that was like the next part. Mm. Now I stretched the spine, which is sort of, to me, both the hips in one line. I have to think about it in the thighs again, standing head to knee. I have to stretch the spine, kind of extend it forward and then come up. And then, then everything comes. But that's a long time. I really like it. I like the precision of it. The other one though, Janusharasana, which I didn't find particularly difficult, but it wasn't my best posture. Rolling in, what that means. And I actually started, yeah. I started rolling in before I come down now. It's like a little bit shift. Yeah, and I'm kind of there, and then there's two aspects to it, right? There's like the the shoulders down and the spine. Yes, right? but there's also the knee kind of rolls. Yeah, under a little bit. Yeah, and that's it, cool. And you don't have to do very much, but this is like these little these little things, which are I could I could call them things I didn't have problems, but like they're absolutely fascinating to me every time I do them. Right. Yeah. So what are you guys working on? Exactly. Well, Kathy. And well, along the lines of what um, Sarah was just saying is that in John and Sharasana in that final posture, I've been working on creating pres pressure with that foot against the thigh. And that has changed the whole angle of the knee and the ankle mm -hmm. because I noticed there was alignment, misalignment in my ankle and some tightness in that low, the calf, the outer calf that is gradually getting worked out, which is then helping with my, um, my uh, tree and toe because now I can get my foot up. You know what I mean? So that's yes. all connected. So pressing yeah. that in, oh, um, right. you know, cause it's something that I think people just go below right by that, even though we say it every time. Yeah. Yes. And so I started pressing and what a difference that has made. So um, I like that. That's and I have cool. differences on both sides. So I yeah. see this, this uh, right foot is very, um, the ankle pops up, my heel pops up because of the tightness and misalignment in my particular body. I'm not saying this is for everybody, but what a difference that has made for me, pressing that, getting that pressure and getting that proper alignment. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's funny actually how quickly Janya Sharasana can deliver benefit when you make these important adjustments yeah. in some of the technique. We had the same yeah. thing, we had a gentleman who would be in screeching agony every time he tried to do the posture and giving him those instructions, get him to bring the heel all the way into the groin, um, position the foot correctly. And now his psoas muscles, his lower back pain, a lot of that is gradually just mm -hmm. gradually going away and now he's not in screaming agony anymore and you know and he'd had this problem for years in his back and you know he'd seen physical therapists and so on and you know just just that posture alone i mean it's such a wonderful yes it's mm -hmm. under uh, underestimated yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i find that with um in all of the postures the tiniest little alignments um when you guys were talking about um standing head to knee before and, um, you know, pressing down with the big toe um, to engage, and that helps to engage the inner thigh muscle. Well, I had, um, it helps, in, you know, all of your muscles engage with your foot flat. For years, my big toe was lifting up and I had no idea. And I ended up with knee problems. Mm -hmm. And it was actually, um, I have an active release therapist who said, 
you're lifting that big toe up. I'm like, what? You know, as soon as I, and my whole, that whole line and my inner thigh is super weak and it's strengthening wow. now. And I can feel that muscle now where I never felt it before. Wow. So the, just the littlest things can really make a huge difference, yeah. you know, especially for us, like I'm a daily practitioner, you yeah. know, so put, you know, those of us have been doing it a long time and, you know, you're pretty dedicated and you come all the time. These little tiny things can make a yeah. big difference, right? Sure. Yeah. They do. They do. They do. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. What are you, what are you working on at the moment? What, what, what are the things that are, are most interesting to you that you're exploring at the moment in your practice? Oh, may I say? Yes. yes. Okay. So, well, I think that definitely the toe stand is something, uh, also something I can see the progress because it was a long journey for me from even, I couldn't even sit from the beginning, <laughs> but now I can sit. So, and I'm still working for, you know, my, my leg being equal height, but yeah, yeah, that's something, you know, and then also another thing is this, what is that called this, you know, this, um, straight and then to put, put my head to, eventually I have to put my head to toe, right? That, yeah, that would, yeah, that ah. would never happen, but that would yeah. never happen, but I can see the progress. I can see it maybe, uh -huh. closer, maybe a little bit closer. It's not <laughs> fun. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. Yes. It's fun. Yes. I can, oh, I'm closer today, right? Yes. So, so that's the thing I just enjoy myself. I'm, I'm closer today than, than yesterday. So Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Angie? Well, you know, the whole hyper- I'm standing here to knee, as you, you mentioned, yeah. And just in every posture, like I found ever since I've really started working on those straight legs, 90 minutes goes by in about seven minutes. That's true. <laughs> it's like, well, we just started. Yes. But, you know, the other two really fun things for me right now, believe it or not, blowing in firm pose, I never had gotten... Ha Re being able to relax my stomach to pull it in and out until you started yeah. saying the blacksmith's bellows and I could really uh, see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, so that's what this thing is about. <laughs> all so now I'm starting to be able to, I can do it now when we go slow, but yeah. once yeah. we go faster, it, you know, I start to kind of tighten up. So I'm starting to be able, so that's, that's been really fun. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. also fixed firm pose, believe it or not, getting my heel especially on my left side to actually touch my hip and stay touching my hip yeah. and noticing. And Matt, you've even said something to me about it, how then from there, I've got to really relax my left glutes and how yeah. that really just changes everything. And so every time I do that pose now, one, knock on wood, my knees are feeling better than they have in years. Oh, yay. Wonderful. I mean, and not, not, not just that, but you know, Matt in particular has helped me with geez, tree and toe. And I mean, everywhere you have to bend your knee a lot, but also just, you know, not only that, but just that freedom of being able to figure out what to relax to get everything in line. And, and so it's been a lot of fun. Really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can tell Angie, but with what you're saying, how, how long have you been a dancer? My whole life. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, think about fixed firm with your hips this way, right? And we're asking you, mm -hmm. right? So your foot is a little sneaky because mm -hmm. if your foot goes out a little bit, it's, it's giving, a, you know, your, your hip a little bit of cheating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> right? that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just by having that foot, you're helping your hip, mm -hmm. right, to come back in a little bit more, which is going to help your standing head to knee, right, which is... So that's a really good point of, of all the postures that you don't have to worry about balance and, and working on your hips. Fixed firm is excellent. So, you know, like take advantage of those two sets, knowing what it's doing for your standing bow. Think about your foot. You know, you see where well, you have that probably the turnout and fixed firm. If you do that correctly, religiously, like how Matt has it set up right for you, that's going to help huge in making sure you kick straight back and your foot is over the top of your head yeah that's I was awesome just, i was just thinking i was slightly distracted uh, uh that that maybe this is the only group of people where doing this everybody knows what you mean <laughs> <laughs> I remember it's it's like, like, everybody knows what you mean when you do this it's like okay okay i know i tell people you know i'm like you should be this and you're doing you're doing this yeah <laughs> <laughs> not that not that is that? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that is funny. That's yeah, funny. I enjoy, I enjoy the setup of fixed firm. I get when I did my first Bitcoin class. I was very too much too flexible, and the fixed firm just I just did it. I immediately got and then this year without the heat. I realized I didn't know anything about it. I, don't, I didn't know anything about it. It did look all right. It was like that was it. And it's been so fun putting things yeah. in the right place. So that, you know, the setup, very nice for a beginner because they don't know what to do and they have enough time. But I use that whole setup yeah. to put myself in the right place before I go down. And I love that. Yeah. Love that, that, that uh, it, experiencing that. Shit. Right. Yeah. Right. I know what you mean. It's satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. What about you? What are you working on? What are you enjoying? Uh, um, standing head to knee at the moment is, and, and for me, standing head to knee is trying to just find the peacefulness to just, just to get calm and stay calm and concentrated um on each of the steps of the posture um and try not to get too excited about what i'm doing um but to try to stay calm because the moment i get excited then you know then my foot weight, <laughs> you know my foot cramps or you know my weight shifts or you know something over tenses or you know it's just it's just so trying to like navigate um it's a bit like the what you were saying you shika about the not being able to breathe but the same idea that that and i get too excited i get the tenseness i my movement becomes uneven and so then i'll overcorrect and then i'll lose my balance in that posture so just trying to to navigate it with some calmness um and determination mm -hmm. um and it's it's paying off that's 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 working quite well um, um in standing bow pulling um um i've been really exploring really stretching forward to try and touch the front mirror and really kicking up and trying to get to the point where i can feel my foot on the floor and a and a, um, a line of power from the foot from the ball of the foot, the heel of the foot, all the way up through one leg, across into yeah. the other leg, and right up into the foot that's kicking up, mm -hmm. and try to get that sense that that this is all one action. That this, the, the, so that the more I'm kicking up, the more I'm strengthening my standing leg, and the two are happening simultaneously as I stretch forward. So there's essentially those. I'm trying, you know, so I'm I'm exploring the 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 three things happening simultaneously that really stretching forward so the scapula is coming out and really pushing down into the floor as I straighten the stand leg and really pushing up to the ceiling. And even though I don't have the same range of motion that some of the, uh, some of the competitors in the studio have, um, I am opening up, you know, and, yeah. and bit by bit by bit I'm opening up. And it's a very satisfying Thing, yeah explore and then and, and then of course noticing some days i tell up and i, I just say it happening it's like it's like uh, uh, it's like what happened yesterday it was it was yeah, it yeah. Was good like today yeah. is a double train yeah. Wreck, you know? yeah yeah um, but that's yeah. you know that's like yeah that's that's it that's the that's yeah. the beautiful journey every day is different for sure yeah yeah um wow. i mean all of yeah. the postures to be honest yeah. I, i'm exploring them yeah. all but th those two i think of uh, have really caught my attention. I love Janya Shirasana. I, I think it's a fabulous, fabulous posture that's often overlooked. Um, I love exploring the stretching posture where you know, at the end where we grab our feet and stretch forward. And, and again, starting to notice that even though I'm teaching it about stretching forward, I just suddenly notice, hey, I'm pulling my toes back. Stop that stretch forward from the lower spine and like oh, oh i've tightened the lower spine and now i'm pulling the toes but you know it's like just noticing that i'm oscillating between even though i quote unquote know better um it, it in my body it's oscillating between productively doing the posture and unproductively getting stuck in the posture and mm -hmm. having to keep noticing that and then let something go to go a little bit more um 
and uh, and so that's just that's very interesting. It's, uh, it's, yeah, and it's calming. You know, it's like uh, that wonderful phrase that we use. You know, concentrate one point. And obviously the Upanishads talk about one pointedness of concentration a great deal that that um, when you really get absorbed in what you're doing, it's very calming. It is. And like yes. you come out, the, t- the teacher says change and you're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to just continue being <laughs> yeah. here. Thank you very much. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of absorbed. I'm kind of busy. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that, that I used to spend the whole time thinking, is it good? Is it bad? It's like, and then I just got interested in technique. And I'm now yeah. talking the technique the entire time. It's like it's it's so much more pleasant, and it goes yeah. really fast, as you say. It's like I'm, sometimes we get to rabbit. I'm like, oh my god, rabbit! Yeah, I'm not ready. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle, what about you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um. Well, just I want to add to what you're saying there first. Is I, you know, it is. I feel like our our yoga right brings us on such a journey, especially Bikram yoga, because it is the same every time. And if you stick with it long enough, right, you transcend out of that monkey mind of always wanting to change or think good, bad, or, you know, um, you know, wanting to hear something different, all those things that keep you out of diving in deep into a solid meditation where there is no time or space, Hmm. right? And that's such a, I, I love that. I love that too. I love melting into each word that's said. Um, in a, in, yeah, it feels like there is no sense of time. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. You know, to, to add to that, I, th- those of you with, with Bikram, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you that he doesn't want to talk to you about self-realization. I don't know if any of you guys know that, but you know, he, he, to ask him about self-realization is not something he talks about. And I don't think he's being mean about it other than it's, you know, you, if you say one thing, then maybe you just, you're going to idolize that one thing where self-realization is, is so huge. And I think Bikram was smart in saying, just do these postures, Mm -hmm. just do them the way that they're, they're this 26 and two, the way it's said. And I think a lot of what we're talking about today kind of is self-realization, even talking about kind of that blissful feeling or being, you know, in the moment and also physically, you know, when I think about, we were talking about half tortoise when he's, when he says to keep your hips on your heels, I mean, there's no blood flow in the legs. So, you know, all of that blood is going, you know, to the heart and to the brain and into, you know, the bondas, which he doesn't talk about much to include Johnny Shirasana. If you listen to his two CDs, when he's has you in Johnny Shirasana and he's telling you to roll in left elbow, he's telling you because he knows, right. It's going to affect your pancreatic gland. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, there's so many things in these postures that we were getting out of it physically, mentally and emotionally, spiritually, of course, too. right to to self realize, I self realize. Right. It's 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 fascinating. It's such it is it's an enlightenment. It, it's a tool for absolute enlightenment. You know, and so for me to answer your question, Sarah, I feel like. Um, I shared with you that I feel like I've, uh, I don't want to say lost. I'm not sure, you know, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm more aware of my breath in every posture. Mm -hmm. And, um, I am working on keeping my, I, I enjoy working on keeping my breath nice and steady and working on, you know, my holds of my asanas. Mm-hmm. Which is maybe why, as a teacher, I'm watching everybody fidget a lot because I know I'm working on my own mm-hmm. holding of each gesture, holding mm-hmm. and breathing normal. What does that mean to breathe normal? Mm-hmm. You know, in each posture. That's that's it. Besides all everything that you're saying too about each posture, I mean, I'm certainly working on my standing bow, my my I, all of them. You know, my half moons, my awkward's. Let me think if there's one. My triangle is is definitely my left side is uh, it's very hard for me to turn my head all the way on the left side so i'm wondering why that is and exploring that a little bit more my my right side i can do better my left side is is That's hard not a great answer though i'm wondering why that isn't exploring it goes right yeah there. it's not a problem if you don't try to fix it no right but it is available for yeah interest it's it, it's interesting to me yes. right i can't i yeah you know, 
So I and I sometimes as yeah. well, if it's more awareness, I noticed, for example, that I feel like when I lie in Sebastian, sometimes I completely crooked, scrunched up mess on my left hand side. But when I look to check, I'm way straighter than I was like a year ago. But my awareness is noticing something, and, and you know, whereas before I felt straight, and I was I was a crooked, scratched up mess. <laughs> it's like, right. then, it's right. like I'm quite straight, but I can right. feel it. So some right. of these things, I think the awareness also builds, right? And you're it so what, totally what does. Is actually things yes. big and they're yeah. for attention, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the other thing I was telling Sarah too, because Matt, Sarah, and I tend to talk yoga all the time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you guys, I have learned over the last few years, maybe the last two year, two years, maybe, um, when I'm in a moment of crisis in my posture and I say crisis, just to express the point, um, I don't fall out. I, I know how to save my, I'm, I can save myself. That's a big deal. Mm. You know, there's a moment where I, instead of just falling out or whatever, I do I ha I have an awareness to do something to help me stay in it. Mm. I think that's a big deal in 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 for me and translating into my life, right? Like moving into, you know, the line of fire a little bit and and yet, you know, being able to maybe you know, save it or not don't don't completely think that you you know, it's done and over, you know, that there's still there's still room for you to succeed. Mm. You know? Mm. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very important. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, you know, uh, it's a little bit of the same idea of taking that boldness one step further. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's good. Right. So anything else? Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions or observations? Yeah. Um, I have a, hard time still understanding how to do this um um this 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 for the i don't know what to call this but th this thing oh. no you mean the the, the standing oh, separate like head to knee yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. To knee. So what, where am i focusing what 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 um so doing? so if i show you from the side here so you're you're I won't do with the arms, just so you can see the head so the, a lot what a lot of people do when i say you know um Tuck your chin to your chest, look at your stomach, go down, touch your head to your neck. And what students do is I say, tuck your chin to your head, and they go, and like, and I'm like, I have it. All I said was, tuck your chin to your chest. So, chin to the chest. Right. So, don't go forward to begin with. Chin to the chest. That's the first action. Yeah. Look at your stomach. So, you're looking right at your stomach, or maybe your sternum. You know, it could be right even up here, but but you're looking as close in in your chest um, as you can. And you keep your eyes there, you keep your chin there, and then you suck your stomach in. Yeah. And then round. So as you suck your stomach in, you see that your, your spine is going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. And then your goal is to keep rounding, just like rabbit, is to round down sucking in tucking in to get the head to the knee oh. um as opposed so i can show you actually on the other camera it's a little bit easier on the other camera hang on so i'm, I'm start focusing on the upper upper spine not uh, stretching my leg yeah um so uh, hopefully we are definitely talking about the same posture so hopefully you can see from here so um the, what a lot of people do in this posture is this they just come down Right. So the body is very long. Right. The body is very, very long, and it's going forward. Forward. Yes. And this is not the posture. Um, the right. posture is about rounding the spine. So it's more okay. like this, and you see that I have not come forward very much at all. I'm rounding to get my head to touch my knee. Ah, uh, I see. So my my weight. <laughs> Weight is on the middle or a back leg? Um, the weight should be even across both legs. Yeah. But it start okay. with a solid foundation in the back leg. Mm -hmm. And so there's one thing you can do to practice this. Um, you can try this as a different way of doing the posture, just as an experiment, which is to really get the sense of the rounding of the body. Bring your arms behind you and grab your elbows. Uh -huh. So you're grabbing the elbows from behind. Yeah, yeah. 
And this prevents you from just surging forward. And then everything else in the posture, do the same. So lock the knees, especially the back leg. So I put a lot of weight in the back leg and the front leg. So both the legs are straight and solid. And then chin to the chest, look at the stomach, suck the stomach in and go down and keep grabbing the elbows. So you see, I can't surge forward and then touch my forehead to a minute. Wow. And so it, it, it's very different from the alternative, which of course, like I said, just to contrast it again, is what most people do, especially as beginners, is... <laughs> That's me. I tend yeah, to yeah, yeah, I just, my weight go to the front knee, and then the instructor said, no, no, but I sometimes don't, don't get quite, you know. Yes. Like, and obviously, how much you can round the spine... That's, you know, that's, that's your range of motion today. Yeah, yeah. But the sucking of the stomach in, we say exhale breathing is the cue is exhale breathing, suck your stomach in. So really take a breath and then exhale it all out and then suck the stomach in and literally hold the stomach in and then come down. So even if you, to begin with, if you really get that sensation, maybe you end up holding the breath for five or 10 seconds and it, won't feel exactly right, but it'll be a starting point mm -hmm. to really get that sense that you have to exhale and suck the stomach in to help you round the spine. Um, and so the stomach action is a very big part yeah. of depending on the spine. So if that's my spine and this is the front of my body, it's like if the stomach was a muscle that could push backwards, which mm -hmm. effectively it is, the more it pushes, the more the spine will round. Right. And then you add to that, your chin to your chest. So now you've got your chin to your chest and you add your stomach and the whole body can round and the, fore, the head can touch the knee. So those two pieces work together and it's, and it, you know, it should be kind of exhausting to, to begin with. I would say it's also um, for many people, it's a difficult posture. This doesn't mean it's impossible. Mm. So you do little, little, little yeah. Little yeah, I, I feel a lot yeah. of resistance to my my back spine. It's just yeah. straight, you know. It doesn't really yeah. bend at all. Yes, and and it's okay. So you know this this that posture and the various other postures we do, like rabbit and standing head to knee, where all of those ones where we do that forward rounding compression. All of those are very good for your spine, especially the upper back right. the, of the spine. And yes, yeah, so, so for some people are very have a lot of stiffness there. And so this is a very good exercise. Whether you manage to get your head to touch your knee or not, that, that, that may or may not happen. Um, but you, you, the continuous effort to make it happen is what's going to gradually open up the spine. And then, of course, at various other times, we're doing backward bends as well. So we're really starting to get that spine increase the mobility and the flexibility of that spine. And one thing that we were talking about earlier, the, the dialogue, and Matt said it, but Michelle and I were talking about the directions, you know, forward, back, up, down, left, right. So the dialogue helps you out by saying, if you listen to it, excel breathing and you go down. Yes. Not yes. forward. Yes. <laughs> and once you so think it's, down, it's down, you start to think, what do I have to do to get that? forward. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> mm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, but, but, but the grabbing the elbows, is, the, you, you try that at home okay. and, and, and grab the elbows behind you. So that prevents you from being able to go forward. And then it will feel very difficult and very impossible. And that's OK. Um, but you, it'll really get you related to the stomach and the chin tucking in. Um, and you were like, oh, my God, this is really hard. I can't breathe and yes you, you might get to the point where you feel like you can't breathe and that's also part of the exercise because yeah. exhale breathing is a journey to learning how to breathe calmly whilst your stomach is sucked in and to begin with that's very very difficult to do yeah that's definitely a posture to where in the beginning we hold our breath and even Bikram will say that but you yeah. can take little sips of air in and out through the nose but you have to constantly be thinking you know when you suck your stomach in it's like that's room for your head to go up right yeah. you got it you got to yeah. keep lifting up and you know yoshiko you might also look at you know to make sure your legs are open and wide enough hmm. See. You know, because, yeah, that's one of the things Diane emphasized in actually her recording today is um, though I think a lot of people don't realize that the weight is evenly distributed mm -hmm. both legs. 
Okay. So open your legs wide enough too. Mm. Try to, yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I mean, there's a picture here from the blue book. And you look at that gentleman doing the posture. Wow. Yeah. And you look how it's wide right. his legs are. Yeah, it's really wide. Yeah. Can you okay. tell me the front page again? I want to get that book. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. Yeah. Yes. Two, two perfect things. It's worth yeah. what worth we call getting. the blue book. There yes. was um, there was yeah. an earlier version of it. I think um, we have the old one as yes. well. A really old version of it, which was called the red book. It's full of old movie stickers um, as well. Yeah. <laughs> which which one you recommend? This oh, the blue one. book. The I blue think, book. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to get. Yes, yeah. there's the same text, but it's it's, it's, it's a newer easy. version yes. with updated oh, uh, yeah. descriptions. It's actually so. very good. It's very funny. It's, it's very also, funny. But it's also funny. very inspiring. You can keep reading it at any level, right? You read, I read it as a beginner and I got stuff from it. And then any level. In it. it's a wonderful book. Yeah. yeah. And he also talks about in that book, it's quite good because in any given part of the book, if I, you talk about, um, uh, if I pick a particular posture, he's going to talk about, um, he breaks it into two halves. So he, he'll say, this is ideally what you should be doing in this posture. Uh, and then maybe an example of somebody doing it like at that fully advanced kind of level. And then here's the reality check. It's like this is this is where most people are starting. Like this is stiff or that's stiff or this doesn't bend very much and so on. So it, it's a very accessible way to see the journey yeah. from being completely a beginner at it to the refinements that you experience as you deepen your practice. Mm. And also just also that reminder that that it doesn't matter. You know, that, that's the other good, nice thing about because the book's written like that, it's reminding us that this we're not this isn't about being judged on how good our postures are. This yeah. is just the journey of, of our life and our healing and everything. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where we're at. It's just there are tools there to work on it and continue working on it. Yeah. It's a great book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> we're kind of at the one and a half hour mark um is there any anything else uh, kathy's preparing dinner yeah <laughs> and, and back bends are down the wall at the same time chopping carrots and back bending <laughs> <laughs> kathy, i do have one question for you kathy which is thank you well, yeah so i have one question for you that's very important I, I won't be able to sleep without knowing the answer to it which is what's for dinner <laughs> yeah Oh, I'm making uh, sous vide chicken. Ooh. Wow. Nice. And I make homemade sourdough bread. Ooh. With Whoa, it. nice. And maybe some vegetables. Very so, nice. Yeah. What time that that we can I come over? <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Hop on a flight. You can May make maybe in three hours. sometime in the near future, Angie, right? We'll have something that Elon Musk came up with that we can. Beam ourselves that would right be into nice. Kathy's yeah, kitchen. Yeah. 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 So, where are you based, Kathy? Is it? Colorado? I'm in Florida now. Oh, Florida. 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 All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I moved here two and a half years ago. I was oh, in New nice. Jersey. Yes. Oh, yeah. great. Wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. When I met you guys, Matt and Sarah, at Diane's, that's yes. when I was in the, I had just sold my house in New Jersey I and I was just making yes. the move down here. It was a crazy right. time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Wonderful. Where do you teach, Kathy? Yeah. At Hot Yoga Naples. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's nice. We have all ninety-minute Bikram classes, so oh. it's it is wonderful. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yep. Right. Oh. Well, well, thank you. Thank you fun. for These having me. Fun. I kind of like hang out on your group all the time. You oh, guys were right. so supportive when I posted about my back bend. You guys have like the greatest community there. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you we do. Well, you're time. part of it. You're yeah. part of well, it. Thank we're you so much. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Chico, thank you for coming. Yes. yes thank, you. thank you. Yeah, I think I feel Chico. a little awkward of, you know, joining the being a beginner. So. No, oh, no, no. no. It's, 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 it's all beginners. beginners. Yes, yeah. I yeah. applaud you. No, this is how yeah. you get good habits. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank Angie, you. always lovely to see you yes. as well. Yeah, Angie. Yes, yeah, thank you all so much. This is great. Yes, thank yeah. You. Look forward to seeing you more often, too. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.